Hello, early learners, and welcome back to the art room. It's me, Mrs. Reed Wright. We've been talking this week about the elements of art. We learned about line and shape. We learned about form. And today, we're going to be talking about color. Now, yesterday, we learned about color a little bit when we mixed up colors for the painting of our pear. Because I didn't have any green, I had to mix the yellow and the blue to make the green. And I didn't have any brown, so I used the green and the red to make some brown for the stem of my pear. Now today we're going to be talking about colors, and if you still have those three primary colors, red, yellow, and blue with you, great. I also brought in some other colors just so that you can see how color next to each other makes it into a more interesting artwork. Let's start out by singing our hello to all my friends. Oh, it's time to say hello to all my friends. Oh, it's time to say hello to all my friends. Oh, it's time to say hello. Get ready, get set, go. Oh, it's time to say hello to all my friends. Color. Color is a mixing of light that reflects and makes it look like it is a color that is painted. If you've ever seen a rainbow, there's not paint out in the sky that made those colors. The colors are light and reflecting off pieces of water called rain or mist, and it makes color. So interesting about color, how it mixes and it just goes in rainbow order because that's how the light is reflected. And today we are going to look at a book called Red, Yellow, Blue. And I'm going to pick up my table because it's easier to set the book on there and get it set up so that you can see Red, Yellow, Blue. The title is Red, Yellow, Blue by C.G. Esperanza. And it says, and a dash of white, too. So it's red, yellow, blue, and a dash of white, too. Kind of like a rhythm that you want to say. And this is the way it goes. This child is talking about color. There's red, yellow, and blue, and a dash of white, too. And this is the title page. And we're going to get up close to the picture so you can really see it then, rather than far away. And it says, splish, splash, splosh. I painted an elephant blue with a splash of red and a dash of white, too. And look how they did patterns all along here. Swirl, splatter, splot. Elephant was the elephant's name. It's Eli, let me look at this, Eli Buya. Eli Buya was the elephant's name. With her trunk, she grabbed a brush and joined my little game. So you can see the elephant in her trunk has a brush with blue on it. What will happen next? Swoosh, swish, swash. She mixed blue and yellow. Remember what I said? What happens when you mix blue and yellow? Call out, boys and girls. What happens? What color comes from blue and yellow? Blue and yellow made green. Like a green frog fellow. And he's splashing and bringing all the color forward. Remember the frog because he'll return in the story later. Swirl, sprinkle, splat. Red and yellow began to jam. Yellow and red made orange. And what is orange in this picture? A basketball. Like an orange basketball, I can slam. And he's going to slam dunk it through the basket. Swoosh, swash, splash. Red mixed with a dash of white 
We remember this when we're doing things at Valentine's Day. What happens when you mix red with white? Well, red and white made pink. Look what they made, a pink dinosaur. And how you can do this is first trace around the edge of your dinosaur when you're drawing it, and then you can make certain pieces, just straight lines that fit in there, and you can make a dinosaur that's all crackly looking, and you can even make it pink. It says like a pink dinosaur that can bite. And here they use the little dash of white to make the teeth. Swish, splatter, sploosh, blue mixed with a splash of red. But really, when I'm teaching children to mix colors, you start with the lighter color. So the red would be the base, and you'd add a little bit of blue. And what color does that make? Purple. Red and blue make purple. You can see when they did their swirls, they touched each other, and they made purple. And look what they painted purple an octopus. Like a purple octopus king, I said. Now the elephant's got all kinds of colors all over him and the octopus is sending out its tentacles. Blob, blub, blue. A mix of purple, yellow and green with a dash of white, red, orange and blue made the strangest color I've seen. And we used it yesterday when we made ourselves a color to make our stem of our pear. They call it bloop, bloop, bloop. The mix made a muddy greenish gray. Like a monster, a monster of mud. Rawr, is all it could say. The grayish, brownish mud monster sniffled. When he saw the paintbrush, he grabbed it and went wild. Splatter swish. We can say them a green frog, an orange basketball, a purple octopus, and a pink dinosaur. He painted portraits of them all. And that is the end of the story. Now you can check this book out from the library. Maybe your teacher will read it to you again because I think it's a great, great book. Let's take a look at the print for today. Let me get my pointer stick out and turn my body this way. I brought a painting by a painter called Gustave Caibot. Now some people say him Caibot, some call him Caibot, and he is a great artist. And he did about 500 paintings, and he helped his fellow artists. Now in those days, artists were not making very much money. And Gustave was a rich man. He had started out being a lawyer, and then he started being an engineer, and both of those jobs earned him money. Plus, he came from a family that had money. So as his friends who were artists and not making very much money, and they were impressionists, and he would buy their paintings for a lot of money then, and he would hang their paintings, and then they could use that money his friends could to continue painting. And he painted, and his artwork was very, very realistic. Now, what we have up today is fruit displayed on a stand. Now, take a look at it. If you've ever been to a farmer's market, you might have seen fruit displayed this way. All the oranges in one place, all the apples in another, blueberries a certain way, and other berries, and some figs. And all of these, you can tell they're forms because we have talked about how form has shadows on it and that's how you know it's not just a flat circle or this orange doesn't look like just an orange 
piece of paper, it's because it's been shaded like we did around the edge and a little bit of white is added to make it look like their light source is that way. On these tomatoes, the ridges have light on them with the white showing that, that their light is shining on them. Well, we're going to be talking about color because this green was made with blue and yellow and mostly yellow because it's a lime green. Now these other things, they are mixed with colors, either primary colors or when two primary colors are mixed together, it makes a secondary color. For instance, this orange had a little more red added to it and it put this nice orange piece on top of this fruit to make it look even more realistic. Now, when I told you yesterday we were going to um, paint something with a brown paper bag, we are. And I wanted to sing this song about color, and it's the Camp Town Races, and it goes dun 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 dun. So it goes, let's mix colors as we go, dab paints, mix them. Everyone show me dab. Dab just means like dab 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 and mixes stirring and stirring and stirring so the song goes let's mix colors as we go dab paints mix them let's mix colors as we go red and yellow orange next verse let's mix colors as we go dab them mix them let's dab colors as we go blue and yellow green great and the last one is, let's mix colors as we go, dab them, mix them. Let's mix colors as we go, red and blue, purple, just like in the octopus in the story. All right, let me set Kaibo or Kaibot down and show you how we're going to use a brown paper bag as our paper for today. I don't need my pointer stick any longer. I put the brown bag and the scissors on my lap so I would be ready to show you how to cut. Okay, were you able to bring a brown paper bag? If you don't, you just have another piece of paper, it'll be just fine, don't worry. But this is how we make a bag into our art paper. We go around the edge and we cut the edge of the bottom of the bag off. I just go around, cut the little edge off, throw that piece away. I go around the edge and cut the edge off of the brown paper bag. I did it already so you wouldn't have to wait for me. And around this side and around this side. And it takes the bottom of the bag off. Now all we have is a bag like this. It's just a, a circle. And now I can take my scissors and find the place where they glued the edge together. And you can find it and just cut up that side and you have a long piece of paper. So you can get your brown paper bag cut. I'm gonna trim a little bit of it off because you can tell where I did it and it made the bag have an extra piece because I must not have cut very carefully when I cut the bottom off, but I can cut that little piece off. And it doesn't really matter because I can fix it after I'm finished painting. Now I have to remember to be very careful with this fabric chair. And if you're painting, sometimes you can just watch me do this project and then do the painting in your, on your patio or at the kitchen counter or something. And you can see where you have the one where you can pull the bag out. But I was telling you how much I liked, maybe I'll make it smaller, just paint half of it today. Um, I told you how I really like the color white paint on the brown paper. And I'm going to put my piece of newsprint underneath there so that I do not get any paint on this little table. You can see my one from yesterday. Put it underneath and get it all set up. All right. Now, since we've been talking about line and since we talked about shape and pattern, I'm going to think about how I want my banner to look. 
So I have all these paints in my old egg carton still from yesterday because they don't dry out if you close the lid. Look how I close the lid and close the lid and it makes it ready to use the paints another day. So I am going to reach in and get a paintbrush and maybe one of the ones I used yesterday. And over on the side, I have a piece of newspaper, boys and girls, and I wipe off any um, water that I have on there. Now I'm going to make a line from this side of my paper bag all the way across. Now I see a little bit of water is still in my brush. I didn't dry it en enough. So I'm just gonna go over it again so it's not so watery. But when this white paint dries, it's, you can't see through it. It's, there's something about these good paints that make it really nice. And do you see what I mean about how the color white next to the brown paper looks really good? Let me stand it up so you can see. You see, it really shows up. So now I'm deciding in my head while I'm painting, I told you I'm always thinking about what I want to um, paint next. I'm gonna get my brushes out of the water and let them dry out over here. Now I'm going to use a little bit smaller brush and I told you how much I love these round brushes. Now this round brush, I'm going to use some red and put a dot here. I'm doing a pattern. I'm going to do a dot of color and another one. I'm using the same color all the way up and you'll see what I'm going to do with it after that. Now you can do anything, any kind of pattern you want. It doesn't have to be mine. Please don't feel like you have to get, oh, she's using red. I don't have any red. No, you get to choose whatever colors you like. I just thought I'd do red because I'm going to mix a little red with a little white and make what color? Mm -hmm. I told you at Valentine's Day I mix red and yellow, red and white together to make a color. And what was that one? Do you remember? It starts with the letter P and it rhymes with the word think. Think pink. They both say ink. Now, I like the way that looks and I told you I would like for it to be mixed with white. So I'm just dipping right into my white and I'm going to go near the edge and do some mixing. And what is happening as I paint over my red with the white? It's mixing up and making pink. So I didn't even need to buy pink paint. I can mix my own. I'll dip a little bit more. I think I'll put it in the lid so I don't get too, the white too mixed up with other colors. I'm just going around with my brush and mixing straight on here. I'm not mixing it in the lid in my palette. I'm just mixing it straight on my painting. Some of them are lighter pink. Some of them are darker pink, just depending on how much white I get in there while it's still wet. I like the way it's looking, boys and girls. I wonder if you like the, how yours is turning out. Are you mixing colors as we go? Dab them, mix them. I'm gonna wash this red out of this brush and I'm going to use another color. I think I'll do some, um, a flat brush and I think I'll do some blue, the dark blue. And I know if I make a triangle, I do a diagonal line, a diagonal line, and close up the bottom. I dip back in a diagonal line. It looks like I'm starting to write the letter A, a capital A, and then I fill it in. Diagonal line, diagonal line, down the bottom and fill it in. Diagonal line, diagonal line, and fill it in. You know what's interesting, boys and girls? When I'm doing shapes, I think, do I want it to be pointed this way? Do I want it to be um, skinny? Do I want it to be fatter, thicker? I do my painting and then I think, well, how can I adjust that? If I don't the what, like the way it looks, I just paint over the top of it. And I'm gonna do one off the edge here. Now, just like before, I want to make a tint. And usually you start with white and mix in the hue that you want to use. But since my hue is already painted here, I'm just going to dip in my white and I'm going to paint on the edge and see if I can make a light blue, a sky blue, a turquoisey blue. Oh, it looks really pretty when I start mixing it more. 
and I just have to go over and over until it mixes again. Now, if this doesn't seem fun to you, in my lid, I could be mixing my white paint with a little blue. You start with white when you're making a tint, and then you can make that part, and I can just paint around the outside. If that seems more fun to you, you can do that. Because in art, you can choose the way you're going to do it. Because in art, you get to make your own pieces of artwork. Remember that too, if somebody in your family thinks that they need to help you, you say to them, oh, let's get you your own piece of paper and then help them learn how to take the bag apart so that they can make their own. Because really, unless it's a collaborative work, which means working with a group, like at school, your teacher might have you do a project with a bunch of people in class, and that's collaborative, and you have rules about who gets to touch certain parts, and can you paint on someone else's painting? Because you have to really get permission before you do that when you're working in um, lots of color. Because you don't want to mix up someone else's work with what you're doing. People don't like when you put your hands on their work. And you have to say, could I help you with that? And they'll, if they say, sure, you can do the light blue part. And you think, OK, I will. Or they say, no, I want to do it myself. You have to say, well, maybe next time. Because we don't fight about someone else's work. You just say, oh, maybe they just wanted to do it by themselves today, and which is fine. We just have to um, agree when we're working if it's a group project or if it's one you're doing all by yourself. Because it never feels good when someone changes your art. Or maybe you've been working with blocks before, and someone comes over and knocks down your building. You just have to teach them. You say, um, I was going to knock down my own building. Next time, please ask if I want it knocked down. Because it's not fun to work hard on something and have someone change it when you aren't ready for it to be changed. All right, now I have one, two, three rows of things, and I think I will make something else on here. I think I'll do some yellow, and I think this one is going to start out with some sunshine lines, and then I'll put something in the middle. Sunshine lines, and I'll put something in the middle. But this whole idea of color and how you start out with three colors and you can mix them to make a whole variety of colors that you might not have in your mixed up bucket of paints. So don't worry if you don't have paints that you can just paint out of a jar. You might have watercolor paints. And what would happen if you had no paints at all on this project? You know what I say. Just use your crayons or whatever. Um, coloring tools you have. I'm getting another brush so I can put some orange maybe in the middle. And I'm going to make this orange. You know orange is made out of red and yellow, but I'm going to put the orange in the middle like a hot sun. And I might mix some yellow in with it to make it a different color orange. Or maybe I'll make something in between the two, the suns, because these really ended up looking like flowers, don't they? But, you know, I'm not really wild about just using the paint straight from the bucket. So I think I'm going to add some yellow to this to make it like a pumpkin color. As I finish doing this, I want to tell you about tomorrow. We're going to be doing texture tomorrow. And texture is um, things that you can feel, if it's bumpy or smooth, if it has any kind of um, points on the the um, piece. And so I'm bringing textures to rub. And I found out the bottom of my shoes have a lot of textures. And we're going to make a person out of cardboard and paper. So if you'll bring a piece of construction paper for the background, your paper and scissors, glue, and any materials you want to collage on. I'm bringing some ribbon and some yarn and some textures to rub. I think if you have some shoes in your family, you can find those. I got peeled crayons or pastels, and we'll use those. So let's sing goodbye to one another. Oh, it's time to say goodbye to all my friends. Oh, it's time to say goodbye to all my friends. Oh, it's time to say goodbye. Give a smile and wink your eye. Oh, it's time to say goodbye to all my friends. 
Now I want to tell you about textures. If between now and tomorrow you want to go around and rub crayon on paper, like next to a tree or on the sidewalk, or if you find something bumpy on your wall and you can rub the, your crayon on paper, you put the paper against something and rub your crayon. That's what I'm going to use tomorrow. So thank you for learning about line, shape, form, color, and tomorrow texture. Boys and girls, thank you for joining me today. See you tomorrow. Bye-bye.